howdy. I am Cyberact with Oh Lord, this one crafted. And today we're gonna be talking about the Q and A from Mojang that happened this week. Originally, I was just gonna listen to it, but uh, I figured I would do it with you guys and talk about what they said. So here we go. Blocks and items Q&A August 30th, 2024. This Q&A took place in the Bedrock Add-ons Discord. Nine Mojang slash Microsoft employees joined us to answer questions about the custom blocks and items API. Questions were community sourced. Warning. Not all messages were copied over, and some were copy edited. If you want to see everything, join the above Discord, and get the events archive role. HCF deprecated slash removed features replacement. 1Q, are there any plans to bring back all or some of the deprecated slash removed features from the HCF experiment whether a straight up reintroduction or via a new method? Two components as an example are Minecraft knockback underscore resistance for items and Minecraft unwalkable for blocks. 2A, when we were working through this, we prioritized the pieces of HCF that were being used, and the ones that were not, were not included with the initial work, however this should be in our backlog to go after in the future. Just right off the bat, when they say were being used, did you get asked if you were using those features? It is really interesting when they say stuff like that. Well, we were focusing on the stuff that was getting used. Well, who did they ask? Well, they asked the partners. Then ask you guys. And if it isn't, it will be after this Q&A. Thank you for the feedback. Why the recent changes? 1Q, how did you come up with the very interesting recent changes and what motivated you? Why was replacing HCF with custom components a good idea in your opinion? 2A, HCF events had some issues with stability, expandability, and was overall, we felt, clunky to use. Eventually it was decided that we needed a completely different solution for long-term support of the feature. Scripting is far more stable, easier to expand with more functionality, and is more in line with other existing features in addition to being more powerful. We so let's just, let's just go through that and just take it one by one because there's, there's just a lot of bullshit in there. So let's start over. How did you come up with this very interesting recent change? Was this edited by the mods? Like, very interesting? That's uh, one of the least uh, ways to say the HCF changes and all the, the effects it's had on people over the last, uh, I don't know, year. Um, it had some issues with stability. Did anybody out there running those hundred thousands of packs that have been showing up saying everything's broken that had tons of servers and tons of add-ins have any stability problems i haven't seen a single person show up from the hcf in three or four years saying man hcf and experimentals really having stability issues Expandability issues. What was more expandable than HCF was? It allowed people to do tons of things that they're struggling to still do today based on the first post, plus all the other complaints, plus we can't even do most of the stuff with blocks that we wanted. We, you can't sit on a block still. You can't make a block chair and sit on it still to this day without, oh, well, it's a... Uh, it, so overall, we felt, we felt uh, added in, we felt that was clunky. It was overall clunky. So you're telling me that the way that everybody was able to just do it really easily understand it was clunkier than learning JS and try to blend JS into Bedrock that's already there? The API gateway and trying to convert between all of this is not clunky. Making everybody learn all this other stuff is not clunky. Are you kidding me? HCF was way less clunky than doing JS and trying to merge this crap in from all the programmers. 
Um, eventually, we decided we needed a completely different solution for long-term support of the feature. The feature you just canceled? The feature that you put out as experimental and then got rid of after four years? You then decided we needed a completely different thing? Scripting is far more stable. Uh, the API gateway is going to have performance issues. It's not more stable when people struggle to do it. It's not more stable when there's not a, enough support in the community to teach everybody and to support them and to diag their code. Their code could be tens of thousands of lines now in JS versus a few thousand lines in JSON of what we were doing. Who has the expertise to go through and diag all of their uh, JSON or all of their JavaScript? JavaScript and their JS stuff when they have a problem. Who's going to do that? Who's in the community that's going to be a JS expert that's not just going to go off and get some job doing JS or go do something that's going to hang around and help people do all of that diag and learn all that stuff and help them with those tens of thousands of lines of code versus where we were previously where most of the community once they learn the basics could help each other there's a huge difference between there but somehow scripting is far more stable well then why isn't the entire thing scripting why have json at all why not make it all if if we could have so much more stability if we all just did js then why not just do js and isn't c plus plus way more stable than js is why don't we all just do c plus plus and get rid of all this surface crap if we're all going to be programmers let's be programmers um easier to expand with more functionality easier for them to expand see it's in every one of these, just read it as it was too clunky for them. Eventually, they decided that they needed a completely solution for their long-term support of features. And scripting is far more stable for them, the programmers, and easier for them to add more functionality. And it's, in, it's more in line with other existing features. Now, this one is just complete bullshit. What other features in Bedrock use JS? None. What's more in line with other features is JSON and doing components and events and component groups. So this entire line is just complete bullshit. Just blowing smoke up your ass. Um, let's see. It's... And it's more in line with other existing features, in addition to being more powerful. So it's so wonderful that it's more powerful, it's more in line with everything else. So why wasn't it done at the beginning? Why wasn't it in there at the very beginning of all this? Why is it 2024 and all of a sudden now we're choosing to do this and yet this is the most stable option. It provides more features. It's more easy to uh, expand. Or is it just that they hire different people that are running the show. Those people know JS. They like JS and that's what they're going to shove down our throats. That's what they're going to force on us because for them it's less janky for them it has stability issues you know it it's it's very weird because if you took it from the community standpoint and you said well hcf seemed to be working fine and stable for everybody we didn't have people coming in and asking for help with hcf every day they built their stuff and it was off and running so where is the stability issues? Uh, expandability, it seemed perfectly expandable to us as the community. People were using it great. What's less expandable is having to go learn JS that doesn't do simple things like allow you to sit on a fucking chair. How long does it take for us to get a block chair that you can sit in or interact with or, I don't know, pick up and move around? Just basic stuff. Like, it's ridiculous. So let's get on and on. Okay, so uh, let's see. In line, we iterated on several approaches 
uh, to try to integrate scripting and JS events, which eventually led to custom components. Yay, the solution of everything! Uh, we do have a few improvements coming to custom components because they're not perfect yet, but they're going to get much better. Overall, custom components, we thought, provided more power to creators and had a far better long-term support for Bedrock Platform than HCF events did. For them. For them. And every one of those, for them, it didn't have a better long-term support f that for the people that had already used it. You canceled it. They can't use it anymore. So, of course, it had long, better long-term support. You killed off the other option. It, it's just, it's stupid. It, the whole system is done with component, component group events. But no, that's too janky. All oh, events have to be in JS. Why? Well, because some programming professor taught me that at school that JS is used for events and JSON is used to store data. And if you don't do that, it's wrong. But we've been doing that for 10 plus fucking years. It's what built Bedrock. It's what built everything we know. Oh, but it's wrong. We got to do it the right way. What? It's wrong to you. So you're going to force everybody else. It is only wrong to you because some professor told you that. In the real world, you use tools however they work. I use a butter knife as a screwdriver. It works really well. Yeah, but you have to use a screwdriver. No. No, we really don't. I have a lot of butter knives. Only got one screwdriver. Now, you could go to some professional and he's going to say, oh, You got to use that screwdriver. It matters so much. But in the real world, butter knife works just fine. So this is why I don't think it's helpful to have professionals running most of these things because they keep doing this stuff instead of having... People that come up through the community are enthusiasts that are part of the community and know what all this stuff is and then go up into the system and run the show. Instead, we get a hired professional that just got out of, you know, some college somewhere and they say, oh, well, uh, my professor at college said that you use this one for this one. Well, let's just go to C++. We're doing game development. Let's do it right. Open up all the APIs. Let's do it right. If we want to do it right, then get rid of JSON. If you're going to do it right, then turn it into a full-fledged game engine. Otherwise, stop nickel and diming this one thing. Oh, well, we got to move this one thing over. Well, that one thing over cuts the arm off of most of the community. Now, some of the community will grow back two or three arms in that spot and become some mutant. But that's not really a good place for Bedrock, is it? On several approaches to integrating scripting and JSON events which eventually led us to what we have today with custom components. We do have a few improvements coming to custom components sometime next year that we are excited to share with you all. Yay! Overall, improvements! we thought provided more power to creators and had far better long-term support from the Bedrock platform than HCF events did. Custom Tile Entities 1Q, will there be such an opportunity to create your own blocks, chests? 2A, that's not on our near-term roadmap, but we are actively looking at all of the block behaviors that can't be replicated in data. 3Q, are there any plans of adding- So we're not even gonna get interactive blocks anytime soon. Why? Why did you shove scripting down our throats if we aren't going to get interactive blocks? We can't animate the blocks. We can't interact with the blocks. We can't sit on the blocks. We can't run particles on the blocks. What? It's a block game. And yet, most of us are doing everything we're doing with entities because you guys won't get your shit together and make the blocks do something. Tile entities. Or, 
at least, block animations. For a, definitely a neat area to explore. I think with custom block components, script. Think about that. It's in the area to explore. It's not on the list to do. It's not, it's not in, on the near uh, road map. What the fuck are they doing? If you're not working on this shit, what are you working on? This is the number one requested feature to interact and have smart blocks that do something. What the fuck are you working on other than crashing realms and deleting people's worlds? We got one update, one line in the update this week. Oh, we fixed some uh, uh, game crashes. What? And yet it's not even on. Block animations aren't even on the list yet? It's something to explore? What the fuck? It makes it a lot easier to fake this. I think most of the features of block entities can be emulated with that. One thing you can't easily do is block specific storage, like a chest inventory, so that would be really nice to enable somehow. Item description component. This is the people, these are the developers saying that would be really nice to enable somehow. What? Who is running this show? Who Who's the one that's managing all of this that comes out to the community and says, Oh yeah, chests. So oh, yeah, that would be interesting to look at. We should look into chests someday. What? You don't have an answer for how to make custom chests and storage yet. It's 2024. These are the number one requests. What are you working on from the bottom up? What? You, you, we got a fucking sniffer. We got a sniffer. But we can't get animated blocks or... A block we can sit on, or a block that can have storage or a chest in it. We've got to use entities, but you won't optimize the entities so we can have lots of them. So instead of having an optimal gaming experience, an add-on experience, we have. Oh, what did you? What did you say earlier? Um, we felt like it's clunky. You know what's clunky? Blocks that don't do anything. You know what is clunky? Blocks that don't do anything. You know what is clunky? Items that don't do anything. Yeah, that's really clunky. Maybe you should look at that. You know when we have blocks and we can't put stuff in them or have custom chests? It's like, what, one of five interactable blocks in the entire fucking game and we can't do any of them. Oh, wait, hold on. Sorry. We could do a custom crafting table. So we could do custom crafting tables, but we can't do anything else. Why? Once again, are you working from five, like 5,000 up and like animated blocks is number like five and, and sitting on blocks is number like 10 and putting stuff in blocks is like number one and you're at like, you know, on the list, 5,000. Well, we should look at those up on the top of the list someday. But right now, we're focused on sniffers. We really think sniffers are where the game's at right now. One Q. Are there any plans to add an item component to items that allows us to add descriptions to them? A good example in vanilla are music discs and goat horns. A pretty good use case would be for custom music discs, or an item that has a short description on how to use it. It can even be useful if we make our own potions, because this way we can list our effects using this component. 2a, this is an interesting idea to explore. It is not currently in our near term roadmap though. As mentioned, the scripting API get lore can assist here but won't work in the creative menu. Custom components. So what you're saying is it's clunky that the JS solution in this situation is clunky. 
whereas a custom component solution, HCF, would have not been clunky and would have been more expandable and easier to use today instead of in the imaginary future. Did I get that right? 1Q. Are there any plans to allow data binding to custom components instead of the has or does not have interface we have currently? 2A. This is a feature we are looking forward to doing and will be coming sometime next year. We want to flatten custom components into something that looks and feels more like other components. 3Q. Does this include parameters or will they be coming? And it's just going to be components. If you're going to flatten custom components and make it look like other components, and it's just components, why did you take HCF components away when we already had them and they worked and we were using them if you're just going to replace them with custom components that look like components? That seems pretty clunky. 1Q. Are there any plans to allow data binding to custom and components? And it just cuts everything out for what? Like, you said late next year. So two years, we're going to have no ability to do any of this stuff while you guys, what, twiddle around? Instead of the has or does not have interface we have currently. 2A, this is a feature we are looking forward to doing and will be coming sometime next year. We want to flatten custom components into something that looks and feels more like other components. 3Q, does this include parameters or will they be coming sooner? Parameters would make custom components much more shareable across items and blocks, as well as between projects. 4A, both custom component flattening and parameters are likely to be released together, and yes will also likely require scripting version 2.0.0. For now we are saying that both of these features will be coming sometime. So something else is going to happen is now all of the people doing JS are going to be eternally running, the, chasing the JS dragon. They're going to have to constantly be updating and upgrading to the these versions. And const we already have people coming in the chat constantly saying, well, I'm getting this error. What version are we on now? Th this is going to be a constant problem. So if you're working on a, a add-on that's one to three years long, this is going to become a freaking hellhole, just like it is in Unreal Engine 5 and all the other platforms. That you're going to be chasing this horrible, horrible version nightmare from now on out. Next year, work more with the script API. 1Q, I don't know about the others here what they have been doing before creating add-ons, but I'm coming from a JavaScript website creation slash Discord bot creation background and I find it relatively hard to work with all those JSON files. Well, I'm not suggesting to completely abolish them, but I would love to leave the visual features of the block and items into the JSON files and move everything else that has to do with events, functions, etc. into the... So now you see where everything's going. So a, pr a programmer shows up, someone that's doing this in other places, and says, Oh, man, these JSON files are so clunky for us programmers. We should just get rid of all that stuff and let's just make this focus at programmers instead of creators. So professional programmers need it. Creators need not apply. API. That's a common thing in developing mostly. Anything that the main part is in a coding language like JavaScript or for Minecraft Java, well, Java. I might make some... See how it's back to, this is the right way to do it, and this is the wrong way to do it, and you guys are doing it the wrong way. Then why was it set up that way? Well, because the original creators of Bedrock were focused on creators, making it easy for creators. Yeah. Not easier for them. Not easier for programmers, professionals, but easier for users and creators and customers. But those people aren't around anymore, it seems like. And the new people that have taken over don't seem to have the same priority. They don't seem to have that priority for us now. Their priority is professionals and marketplace and the dollar signs and getting this stuff working for them. Because you can see, like, it, it doesn't, it's so chunk clunky trying to shove 
JS and JSON together when the whole thing's already been built on this. And other professional programmers come in from other places, not even being paid by Mojang or Microsoft, and saying, look at how horrible this is. This is so clunky. You really got to move all this to JS. Huh. Sounds like someone like Cyberax has been saying that that's what their goal is, to move all this, raise that bar up so you got to be a professional. Because professionals make better quality content, right? Yeah, professionals don't crash realms for a week for 600,000 people. Professionals don't delete players' games, right? You know, you've seen professionals like at... Twitter, everybody bashes on Twitter. Oh, you've seen Twitter down for a week, right? Oh, no, Twitter hasn't been down for a week or even a day, but Rome's was. And yet, oh, we got to raise the bar and make this so harder. They can't even run the system today as it is. Oh, but the solution is we just got to move it all over to uh, JS, move all the hosting to Azure, get it all in-house, and then we won't have these problems anymore. But yet the problems keep happening. Why is that? Doesn't seem like it's the technology. It doesn't seem like it's... This has been running since it was founded just fine. We've all been creating stuff in Bedrock just fine without all of this. And then all of a sudden, we get JS shoved down our throats and Realms crashes, games are deleted, updates fail. There's tons more delay in every update. We have constant failure on releases. So the solution's JS, though. It sure seems like the solution is making all of this easier in the back end and not adding in more complexity and not adding JSN and not doing all this stuff. Seems like it'd be a lot easier for everybody if we kept it as JSON and components, component groups, events. Because it doesn't seem like the team's running this. I mean, look at their responses. It's not even on the list. It'd be an interesting idea to explore... It definitely a neat area to explore. Is this a bot? Was this a real person that responded to these? I, I didn't look, but I mean... <sighs> People angry while saying that the HCF removal also had some hate, but Yemi as a general development... One Q, I don't know about the others here what they have been doing before creating add-ons, but I'm coming from a JavaScript website creation slash Discord bot creation background and I find it relatively hard to work with all those JSON files well I'm not suggesting to completely abolish them but I would love to leave the visual features of the block and items into the JSON files and move everything else that has to do with events, functions etc into the API, that's a common thing in developing mostly. Anything that the main part is in a coding language like JavaScript. So right off the bat, Bedrock's not made for that. The API gateway can't handle it. It's not designed for it. You're just going to pile up. You got this little hole, and you're just piling up more and more stuff on top of it and on top of it, and you're going to put more on JS and more on JS and more on JS. The hole's not changing. Or for Minecraft Java, well Java. I might make some people angry while saying that, the HCF removal also had some hate, but Yemi as a general development found it weird and confusing when starting with add-in creation. In my head it would be something like this. 1. Your JSON file, got the basic information about your block slash item like, 3. Register the block, and use API features. A. I think in general we've been slowly moving towards JSON is definition, scripting is logic which I think is the idea of your post, although with more magic hookups, no need to import the JSON into script. Documentation I love when developers say stuff like, magic hookups. Well thanks, that's great for uh, you know, 
a community that you're trying to say is, hey, we have these jank problems and we have these issues and you guys need to step it up and learn JS. And then when you talk to them, you're going to say, oh, a magic hookup's going to solve our problems. What? Documentation. 1Q. Are there plans to update MS Learn or Wiki.Bedrock with working examples of JavaScript? 2A. From my team's side, we recognized the gap in some of the documentation and moving forward part of our definition of done will be to add better usage examples to the learning portal as we release more APIs. Why yeah. is that moving forward? Why hasn't that already been done? You know it's a problem, but only now when the community asks moving forward is going to be something being said for now it, it will probably be type it script feels examples. like i'm listening to politicians like this this sounds more like politicians are talking to us i also recognize the learning curve for type script can be kind of steep so i will take this idea back to the teams to see if we could provide multiple ways eg type script and javascript but no commitments on that yet but really good so they're even saying that they're not even going to provide all of this stuff in both they're going to try to so now you have hey we're forcing ts and js down your throats but we're not going to give you examples for both of them now we're going to try but we already know your teams are overloaded and your budgets are getting slashed we already know you can't hire the people to do this stuff the documents are already not getting done with the speed that you're changing and adding stuff so you're already not keeping up but now you're gonna two and three exit by adding more ts and js stuff into the mix and then just say words that don't back up the actions are you gonna hire more people and how many how many more hours are going to be contributed into actually doing this and making it happen and supporting the community and, and numbers. You guys want to be the professionals. You guys want to shove professional stuff down our throats. So you be the professionals and give us professional answers. These are not professional answers. How many people are going to hire? How many positions? And how many hours are they going to get allocated to do these jobs and answer these questions and fill in these gaps? You, yourself, and Mitch show up. Or are you just going to leave it all up to the community to do? Because we aren't already overloaded. Feedback. Thank you. 3A. We're also working to make the scripts and samples more accessible and easy to use from the docs. As early as next week winking face. 4Q. Document how falling blocks work. I ask this as a question because the sand in Minecraft functions rather like an entity with gravity but when I have tried to recreate it in the past I have not been successful so it would be good to have a template file for sand so that we could create our own sand types. 5A, I'll take this one as a doc request, thanks. It, he's just taking it as a request doc, you, might, you would have been just as well off going to the docs and putting in feedback. This is a commonly requested thing. It's a basic feature in the game. It's very clunky that we can't do it. Lots of people would like to do it, but we can't figure out why. And when we ask over and over for year after year after year, your solution and answer as professionals to us is, I'll take this one as a doc request. Thanks. as early as next week winking face 4q document how falling blocks work i ask this as a question because custom music discs one he asked it as we a question here because we can't get you guys to respond and do any of this stuff anywhere else this is like number six on the list like I don't it's like you guys don't even are you not making add-ons and looking at the chats and seeing what people are asking for yourselves because it really seems like you're not I mean these are the holy grails we're asking for animated blocks blocks we could sit on with custom geos by the way not just some freaking square block with textures real animated blocks with animated geos a chair we could sit in, 
a fireplace that we can cook food on. Oh, I don't know. What was this last one? A block that we can have fall. Our own falling blocks. It's a basic feature in the game. And you guys are off telling us that JS can do so much more. And this can do more. And that can do more. And we can do more in a few years. Without even addressing the top 10 requests we have for the last four years. These aren't new requests. Doors that open. Custom blocks with doors. Getting rid of shadows. These are not revolutionary things, and most of them we've had in the past, and because of your changes for more, we don't have them anymore. We can't do them now when we used to be able to do them because you have ideas about how we could do them better in a few years. Uh, huh? What's the average time someone's employed in management at Microsoft to run these times? Are you even going to be there in a few years? I can't imagine it's more than two to three years. So you're making plans out for stuff when you're not even going to be there versus helping us in doing stuff today, right now. You could solve shadows. You could solve sh blocks that can fall. You could solve sitting chairs. You could solve doors that we can open and close ourselves and lock. You could solve the skybox not rotating. You could solve so many issues on the top 10 or 20 in a few days, but instead it's, hey, uh, we'll take that one on as a dock request. already have the ability to make custom music discs using Minecraft. This is so depressing and disheartening. This is way more depressing and disheartening than the server chat and how unorganized and unprepared the Mojang staff were for the server chat. It's insane. Record, but are there any plans on making the component compatible with custom music? 2A. This is unfortunately not in our near-term roadmap frowning face with open mouth. So let's just, uh, really quick, let's just do a real a real quick uh, catch-up. So, so far, of the community-requested stuff, the only thing that they're going to do anytime in the next year or two is they said one thing that they were going to do today. So next year. I think it was just uh, more examples. So we're going to get some more examples uh, next week uh, for TypeScript and JS, maybe. Oh, but they said don't. But don't, you know. Don't hold us to that. Um, but this is really good feedback. So, so far, they're batting zero for like seven. We can't even have music. 1Q. We already have the ability to make custom music discs using Minecraft record water logging. 1Q. Any plans to add in water log slash snow log components for custom blocks? 2A, yes. Water logging is part of our short-term roadmap, six months-ish, while snow logging is still a part of the long-term plan, plus six months. 3Q, lava logging as well? 4A, that is also part of the long-term plan. Bow underscore doggo underscore happy 9397673542613729788. Item properties. 1Q. Are item properties ever going to be considered for the future? Being able to store per item data that can be queried through the client would be really useful if this was added only for unstickable items, like item dynamic properties currently function in script API, that would be cool thumbs up. 2. Hey, thanks for the requests in this area. We have more infrastructure likely to do in the area of items first, Item stacks don't have an identity in the same way that blocks or entities do, that I think would be a pre-req for giving them systems kind of like properties on blocks. 
so it's probably more of a medium term thing to beef up items before we get to, the longer term, adding of new capabilities. Items with flipbook animations. 1Q, will it be possible to create an item with flipbook animation or at least with several textures? Like vanilla compass or watch. 2A, I'll take this as a feature request. IIRC I think the flipbook stuff is more deeply intertwined with blocks such that it's probably not super easy to adapt to items. Also, there is some work. What? Is this a bot? Flip books? Flip books are used on entities? Why... Why would an attachable... A 3D item... Be any different? Not to mention, Glint is using the same thing, isn't it? Maybe it's using a shader? I, it's hard to tell because we can't get it documented. What a flipbook is is deeply intertwined with blocks such that it probably is not super easy to adapt to items. This isn't my job. I don't get paid to do this. Why is it that I understand and know more about their code than they do? And why are these people employed at Mojang if they don't understand flipbooks are used on entities? The only reason why they're not working on attachables and items right now is because they're not supported in the materials for attachables and items. You could just fix that for us. And yet you're telling us that flipbooks are deeply intertwined with blocks such that it would be too hard to adapt them to items? They're... They're run by a render controller. The render controller is connected to attachables. I have guides on them. Even then, we have workarounds where we're just flipping the textures really fast. And it works fine. Just make it a native feature. It shouldn't be rocket science. You're professional programmers. Making those big dollars. We need to do in the medium term two items to beef them up a bit before we can begin to give them things like item properties, etc. Sorry about that, TLDR, not in the short or medium term frowning face with open mouth. A method to break blocks on contact with water. 1. Q in-game examples 1 carpets 2 farmable blocks slash plants this is a feature I have been wanting to implement with my add-on for quite some time I attempted at one point to build out this system using scripting API however water in Minecraft behaves in a way that can be drastically manipulated in all sorts of weird shapes and patterns which makes it impossible to detect every scenario so right there uh, JS API, uh, JS API failed. It was clunky and it didn't work for their solution. How many people have already said just in these comments that JS was too clunky to work in their solution? This is a feature I have been wanting to implement with my add-on for quite some. Thanks. Two. A. This will be a block component as part of our short-term roadmap, less than six months-ish. Redstone. 1Q. Redstone underscore so conductivity. So three items under six months or six months-ish and everything else six months to two years. Was a good start, but to make a true redstone device, it must be able to respond to redstone signals. And while you can read redstone power via scripting, 
the process in doing it is inefficient since you have to use queued text. Oh, hey, wait. You mean reading uh, Redstone with JS and scripting is chunk clunky? Not expandable? So, again, JS isn't as expandable as it looks like it is. Extendable. It isn't as not clunky as using HCF that was functioning great for lots of people. So whoever's making these decisions obviously is running into places where their statements and their opinions are being proven to not be accurate. Why are they still making decisions? Are they the ones that took down realms and crashed realms? Are they the ones that keep causing these problems? Where is the breakdown here? You're telling me Redstone, one of the biggest things in the game, probably number one on the list of things that we want added to add-ons, doesn't work well with JS. And it's clunky. Doesn't work well with items. Doesn't work well with blocks. Doesn't work well with storage. Doesn't work well with custom items with storage. Doesn't work with animations in blocks. Doesn't work with falling blocks. Doesn't work with animated items. But it's so better. It's so not clunky at all, says my professor back at, back at college, who's never made a video game. He's never done Bedrock Minecraft, but he knows JS is better for us as creators. You remember that? To constantly check. There's also no ability to generate redstone power, so for you can't make a sensor that responds to stimuli like daylight sensors. That seems like Today, a huge thanks oversight. For the ideas. I'll bring it to the team to discuss how it fits into our existing plans. So again, it's not even on the table. Redstone interactions, getting them into working with JS or anywhere, isn't even on their list. What is on their list? Mojang, please publish what the fuck you're working on. What is on that list that you guys are doing every day? You can see throughout the entire community that there is a distrust for what you guys are doing. And we've tried as creators and people in the community to combat it and combat it and say, no, we just got to trust them. We just got to trust that they know what the fuck they're doing. And more and more, I don't think you do. After realms crashes, after the constant problems of you guys preaching and preaching, JS is going to solve it all. It does more. It does more. It's better. It's not so clunky. And then we saw how HCF went down and the horror show that was and how little you guys actually helped us during it. You just disappeared and you let it up to the whole community just let the community deal with all these issues you didn't show up in the chat you didn't show up to help people you didn't show up to fix your failure and your mistakes you left it up to us so i have a vote of no confidence in mojang's team that's my vote future plans for blocks.json one Q, what are the future development plans for the blocks.json file? Currently, it has a few significant limitations, including its incompatibility with custom geometry blocks, which is one of the most known issues. Will it seems really odd that <laughs> in moving to something less clunky, you've broken the blocks file. Like, <laughs> the thing we're all doing, blocks, a block game, you broke that to make us all do a JS game instead. This file be upgraded or replaced. Additionally, what were the original intentions behind its availability for creators? I'm intrigued. 2A, 
Short answer though is we are planning on getting rid of blocks.json, as far as the intention behind it initially, that is before my time grinning squinting face. But once it is gone, time So, was those who don't know history, what? They repeat it. You don't know why it's there, but you're gonna remove it. What? You don't even know why they put it there in the first place, but you think you have the ego and you think you know what you're doing enough to remove it? Why wouldn't you at least stop and go look and ask why it was there in the first place? Doesn't isn't that just logical? You you don't know and yet you're gonna just remove it. Well if I was doing that job I would want to research why these things are there so that when I make a change, it doesn't cause other bugs. And that's why it's called bug rock, because you guys don't know the history of why things are. And you change it because some professor at some college told you that this is how it should be without actually investigating. Is it going to work and where is it going? And so then people in the community have their stuff break. And the top 10 things we're asking, probably more like the top 200 things we're asking, go year after year after year after year after year without being addressed or dealt with and then instead of helping us and listening to us you remove shaders that we're using to do the things you refuse to add and then you take out hcf without replacing the things that you refuse to add it I cannot fathom that you guys are making your own add-ons. That the team at Mojang has their own projects that they're doing and that you're putting yourself through what we're going through. Because if you were putting yourself through what we're going through, this shit wouldn't happen. All wounds. Unblock update and unblock destroyed. Any. Custom component. 1Q. I really wish these two events would get added as they'd make some things easier to make on block update, which would make connecting blocks and doors easier to make before block broken, for whenever the block is broken in any way including mobs or commands. 2A, this is something that we have looked into, unfortunately it is more complex that it appears to support. Block updates. If this is too complex for your team, can we hire a team that is not too complex for the number one game in Minecraft, or in the world? The number one IP in the world, the people are telling us it's too complicated to get it done. It wasn't too complicated to do a lot of the stuff under HCF. But now, under JS, it's too complicated. When a neighboring block changes is not in our near-term roadmap. Unblock destroyed before event however is a great feature request we can look into doing but is not currently on our roadmap. Color map in custom blocks. 1Q, are there any plans to make custom blocks use color map, like grass and leaves? 2A. Yes we have that on our internal roadmap. Somewhere between medium and long term, not ready to share exact timing yet. It will... I, once again, this sounds more like politicians are talking. What... Be next year sometime though. Get inventories of items with Minecraft storage underscore item component via script API. 1Q, just as we can do with entities, do it with the inventory of items and have the ability to remove, add items, etc. 2A, it's in the backlog. Not sure exactly when we will get to it though. Ideally in the future they will be more coupled and come out closer together grinning face with smiling eyes. Custom creative category and item groups. It feels like 
the people running this show are just along for the ride and just hoping. If we just hope. Just hope. It'll be, it'll turn out fine if we just hope. 1. Q. The ability to add items and blocks to an existing or new category in the creative inventory. 2. A. You can currently create your own item groups, if you add a unique name it will bundle the items you add to it together but it doesn't do the cool collapse the group and add the plus icon, it just moves them all together. Bringing in line the custom group system to function like the vanilla groups do is on our short term roadmap. We don't currently have custom categories in our roadmap. Rotation component for items. I, it doesn't make sense that all requested stuff isn't in your roadmap. Like, maybe it's three years or maybe it's down the road, but wouldn't you have already put that in the roadmap at some point? Like... 1Q, the purpose of this component is to allow players to rotate the item in their hand in X, Y, and Z values at any angle they want, it allows to rotate items without using attachable method. 2A, we have this with item display transforms for block items and for other 3D items it should be possible with attachables. More block geometry capabilities. What? One. What? Here's a question. More block geometry capabilities. 1. Q. I love working with blocks, but there are some times where I would really like to have some features or tools that we don't have right now. But specially regarding the block geometry these are my questions bow underscore icon underscore entities 9. 1. Will we be able to rotate bones and textures independently? Using the Minecraft transformation component or even Minecraft geometry itself. 2. Are there any plans to improve block geometry right now? Something like item underscore display underscore transforms. 3. Will it be possible to modify the block geometry via scripts in the future? 2. A. So improving data-driven geo we are actively working on, and some of the item transform work is in preview. So short answer is yes. As far as modifying geo via scripts, that currently is not in the plans. 3. So we can't do geo animations and scripting is not going to solve that anytime soon. That sounds real clunky. Doesn't sound like a very expandable solution when we could do it with HCF. Hey, so currently we don't have any other vanilla geometries data driven, but that's definitely one of our goals in the long term. A lot of the features like item transforms and UV lock and things have been part of an effort to reach a level of parity with vanilla functionality that would let us expose more of the vanilla geometries. Are there any vanilla geos you think would be particularly useful to focus on? Lock mode for blocks with storage. 1. Q. As we know items lock mod don't work on storage blocks. Any plan on changing that? 2. A. You could try making the block you want be placed by an item using the block underscore placer component. And use an attachable to have the block appearance in hand. Immovable blocks. 1Q, this was a thing that got removed for some reason. This is probably like 7 or 8 on the top 10 requested features that's just been ignored. I would love to have a way to make blocks immovable again. This can be either with a component or event that we can cancel. 2A, this is in our backlog but not sure when we'll get to it. Block poly mesh model support. Once again, will you guys, you guys really need to come out with a list of what you're working on, what's in the backlog, what's taking so long, what are you blocked and stuck on? What is the priorities that are so much more important right now 
that you can't focus on the top 10 or 15 things that the community has been asking for for at least the four years I've been doing it. Block Polymesh Model Support 1Q At the moment we have an experimental opportunity to use Polymesh Models only for Entity Models. 2A Polymesh is cursed. Definitely no plans to extend. What? That's offensive. Telling people that polymeshes are cursed is just flat offensive. The Bedrock supports polymeshes natively. So any of your customer base that enjoys polymeshes are cursed? All their content's cursed? Is that the messaging that Mojang wants to put out to the creator community? That their staff think your content's cursed and if you use it, you know, you're using cursed content. Ha 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 ha. See how funny that is? This is the toxic part of the Minecraft community that Mojang supports and encourages. It's toxic to tell people their content is cursed. Especially creators. Are you kidding? What if my seven-year-old daughter made that and got it in Minecraft and was super happy to have a really cool polymesh dragon in Minecraft and now she sees that Mojang staff say polymeshes are cursed? Are you kidding me? I thought you guys were professionals. See, I'm not this isn't I'm not getting paid to do this. I'm a community member that's just a creator. You guys are professionals that this is your job you're getting paid for and you're telling your customers that their content is cursed if they use Polymesh, something the engine supports natively? It, it's a huge thing in Java. There's huge mods using Polymeshes, including Dragonfire, one of the biggest ones in Marketplace, doesn't use it because you won't allow it. Custom armor trims. 1. Q. Would like to be able to create my own templates for patterns, as well custom items as colors for patterns. 2. A. Hi. Thanks for the request. What do you mean by custom items as colors? So we're still at 3, 4 items that are on there within 6 months and like 10 to 15 items that are in the next few years, if ever. For patterns. We do have thoughts to expand armor trim, but nothing on the roadmap in the near term. Storing entities in items. 1. Q. It would be very useful to have items and blocks that can store entity data. Examples. 1. Custom mob buckets. 2. Custom beehives. This could be handled with components and scripts. Minecraft entity underscore storage. Release underscore on underscore destroyed. True. Max underscore entities. Const storage equals block dot get. Hey, I really like this idea. When I've thought about this in the past I've envisioned we'd allow creators to opaquely snapshot blocks, blocks plus block entities, items, whole item stacks, and entities, who entity and BT, in a way that allows you to persist the data but we wouldn't allow parsing slash data sniffing slash etc. to prevent some very spooky behavior. Are there plans for unequip slash ununequip events? 1. Q. It would be very helpful if the item custom components interface, or world dot after events, supported an event that fired when one of the equipable slots changed. Perhaps unequip, arg, slot, container slot, and ununequip, arg slot, container slot, previous item stack, item stack. This would enable the creation of efficient passive effects, helmet that gives night vision, etc., without the performance impact of constantly checking each player's equipable slots using run interval, as is required now. Oh my gosh, you're fucking kidding me. So we went from inside the behavior of the player using a sensor using a quick equipable as a component that just works with no performance hit to you making people use scripting and checking it over and over and over in a loop and you think that hcf is 
Chunky? Clunky? What? Look at what you're forcing people to do because of your short-sightedness and you thinking HCF is clunky. This is not freaking clunky. Not to mention the performance hit on running it over and over and the API gateway. Like, what are you doing? Do you know what you're doing? Because it really doesn't seem like it. This would enable the creation of efficient passive effects, helmet that gives night vision, etc., without two. A. We have the concept of inventory events, including equipment events. We'd want to consider this both at the custom item component event. It's not something we're working on right now, but something I think we'd like to get to in the medium or longer term. So it's not even on the list. Medium long term is one to two years away. So you're talking about if they don't have a backlog three to four years before you ever even get close to just be a being able to do unequip and quip on equipment on items. That's how amazing JS is. Something that we can do now in entities with no problem that could be really easily added into items. Oh, maybe like it was for HCF or could have been if you weren't so short-sighted. And instead you take it away and then say maybe in three or four years. Could you list the features that you can do with JS now that you're focused on and then the features that you're trying to do to add in and let the community decide if we really think those are great features that you're focused on? Because I don't know what the hell you're focused on. It sure does not seem like you're focused on the stuff that the community is asking for. Are you focused on the stuff partners are asking for? I, I Like, what... What what are you guys doing? Could you give us a list? Because, I mean, reading the change log, it's not very encouraging. The, that one item, one, one little item this week, didn't even say which crashes you fixed, just we fixed some crashes. It's not something we're working on right now, but something I think we'd like to get to in the medium or longer term. Custom keybinds slash buttons functions for items. 1Q, I would like to see the ability making an item run a script when a specific key slash button is pressed. This would be so cool when making maps, or combat add-ons. 2A, we are investigating some very primitive input APIs around movement. Mostly the things that just work for all of our input modes. Custom bindings, which would need to include touch screen UI, are on our minds but not currently in the backlog so they're not even on the list so they're two or three years if they're not on the backlog and they're not in the short term being on your mind doesn't mean shit you can't even get the stuff on the list done so let's talk about this though if you're going to add JS and API and make this a real game engine, real game engine, it's going to be years before you even give, it, give us access to binding. Binding's like the step one of making a game in any game engine is, well, I'm sorry, step one's create the project. Step two is set up the input binding. What is on the list? What are you doing if input binding is on your minds, but not even in the backlog, not even on a list somewhere? It's just on your minds. It's something you're thinking about. Could you make a list of all the things on your mind, all the things you're doing, all the things in the backlog, and all the things way out there so we could have a clue and you could set some expectations of what the hell we should expect. Because at this point, I I'm worried the game's not even going to function tomorrow or at the next update. 1Q. But, but Cyber, like that's ability. ridiculous. They wouldn't do... Oh, well, Ro Rolls was down for almost a week. They deleted Worlds just a few months ago. 
Was anybody held accountable or fired for any of those mistakes? Or are we just going to keep allowing these mistakes to build and build and build and build and build? Or are we going to fire the people making the mistakes and get the best of the best back in there? Making an item run a script when a specific key slash button is pressed. This would be so cool when making maps or combat add-ons. 2A, we are investigating some very primitive input APIs around movement. Mostly the things that just work for all of our input modes. Custom bindings, which would need to include touchscreen UI, are on our minds but not currently in the backlog. More rendering options for blocks. 1. Q, currently, we are given for render methods, alpha underscore test, opaque, blend, double underscore sided. Each of them comes with their ups and downs. However, Blocks with transparent pixels required either alpha underscore test or blend. Both of these have their own issues, alpha underscore test will completely unrender when you're 70 blocks away and blend has some issues as well according to other people in this discord. Neither of these options to my knowledge as well allow face calling lake vanilla glass. Does Mojang plan to add support for blocks to change render method the further away you are such as vanilla leaves? Does Mojang plan to allow block calling to occur not just when a face is covered by an opaque block allowing things like vanilla glass to occur? 2. A. We have a new article coming to the learning portal soon that covers that covers the render distance per render underscore method, so you won't have to guess. The render underscore method that at 905553488510079026 called out will also get added to the existing learning portal page with the other methods, probably in one documentation update. For block calling, you can totally replicate the vanilla glass functionality with the faces on a full block. Replicating glass requires two things, you need to use the render underscore method, alpha underscore test underscore single underscore side asterisk. This will do the visual appearance that you are expecting when you look through the block and will call the back faces of the block. The calling rules will literally remove the face when next to a full face, like dirt, but the visual you want should be achievable just by changing the render underscore method. Asterisk editors note, this is a typo on Mojang's behalf, it was meant to say alpha underscore test underscore single underscore sided. So let's go back to this. I think that the problem is when you use the one-sided on a four-sided block, it not only calls out the back side, but it calls out every the other sides inside the block you need. It, you, it, the window now becomes just one pane and you miss the sides. You can't see other stuff. So if you're doing a custom geo, this doesn't work. Once again, it really feels like these guys are not actually making add-ons and actually building their own content and doing it. It's the same complaint. The, the game developers don't play their own game. These guys don't seem like they're actually making glass and actually going out there and doing this stuff and making custom geos with these materials and seeing that they overlap like crazy and then all your faces get messed up and we need better materials that don't do all that crap. It also didn't, you didn't answer the question. You said that Like it doesn't, this doesn't make sense as an answer. Um, we have a new article coming to the learning portal. We can convert or uh, covers that co soon that covers that covers the render distance per render method. Render distance per render method. So you won't have to guess. Won't have to guess what. We know what the distance is. It's 70 blocks. We want it not to be 70 blocks. It should be the full render distance. We're not the ones setting 70 blocks. You are. I, I don't... This doesn't make any sense to this... 
to this answer to the question. We have a problem with custom blocks where if you use an alpha, the block disappears. I have like four or five guides on it. There is no proper LODing for blocks that are custom in Bedrock right now. And we're simply asking to put the proper custom LODs in for alpha blocks. And then give us a few more materials. Where's additive? Where's all of the materials we have for particles and for other stuff? Why don't we have those in here? One, I'm wondering if we could control our own block rendering like how vanilla leaves dynamically change their render method based on adjacency. For example, if a vanilla leaves block is surrounded by solid blocks on all sides, it'll change its render method to be more performant. Two thoughts on render methods like those used by barriers, light blocks, and structure voids. I have to make invisible collision only or placeholder blocks for marketplace all the time, and it'd be great to have some billboards floating to see where they are. 2. A. Re-render method based on adjacency, there are lots of adjacency slash connection features that we are looking into and trying to figure out how best to support and this is certainly part of that. Why... Why are all of their answers... We don't know, we haven't figured it out, we're trying to figure it out. You're supposed to be the best of the best in the world. And you aren't running this show. You're not running Bedrock. You're not running the game. It's running you. That's a problem. No wonder things are going so poorly and, you know, failing and delays and crashes and deleting stuff. The, the game is running your team. Not, I, I don't think maybe once, maybe twice in this entire thing has your response been, I know the answer to that and I know what's going on. It's, I have to go look more or we got to talk more about that or we're not sure how to do that yet. Why don't you hire people that are? Where's the team that made this game that knew what the fuck they were doing? Could we have them back again? Because things were a lot better under them. Q, I haven't been involved in add-ons much for the last month or two. However, I remember, at least then, that we couldn't have interactions with vanilla blocks in stable. You'd have to use item use on which requires a held item, as player interact with block was still in beta despite being listed as stable on the docks. Has this changed and if not, should we expect to see this in stable in the future? 2. A. We know this one has been in beta for way longer than we intended confused face but we're hoping player interact with block should be moving into stable in an upcoming release. It, we back, do you... When a professional programmer or professional engineer or a professional CEO says we hope you have to get really worried people that are in control of things and have things under their belt and they're riding the bull don't hope they do we're doing this we know this we're working on this this is our schedule this is our plan this is our goals they don't hope we have faith that we'll be able to hopefully get that done this is not a church you're not a preacher. You are a professional game developer and project manager running the largest game in the world. If I was the investors or the, the Microsoft team looking at this interaction, I would be worried. I would be looking to hire replacements. Feel it. Three. You we care to share what we feel it. We know this has been in beta for way longer than we intended, but we're hoping player interact with blocks, probably number two on the list of most requested things, should be moving into stable in the coming release.
y'all found was wrong with it along the way? 4. A. For the player interact events we re Q. Care to share what y'all found was wrong with it along the way? 4. A. For the player interact events we wrestle slash wrestled with the issue that they repeat frequently in ways that are hard to predict or even are device dependent, it makes for an unpredictable API. So, <clears throat> the game is set up in a way and it runs on a whole bunch of devices that makes running scripting API unpredictable. Imagine that. Imagine if somebody predicted or could foresee that hiring professionals to, from college education to come in that didn't look at why things are done how they are, weren't part of the original team making everything, and just come in and say, well, this is how it should be done, but don't know why it wasn't done that way in the first place, would make a mistake like this wouldn't have the foresight to understand that it's on all of these devices and it's not predictable. But you said HCF was clunky. It looks like to me the API that you are shoving down our throat is clunky and has performance issues and doesn't actually perform and do the features being requested. Sure, it does some. You can use a rock for a lot. So, it's not doing the critical things we need. HCF was doing. Shaders were doing. Super Duper Pack was supposed to do, RTX was supposed to do, Deferred supposed to do, hopefully with faith, in the few years ahead of us. What a horrible way to run a game studio. The number one largest game studio in the world has just implemented something that makes the most basic feature number two request of all time that we've been waiting for more than four years for unpredictable wow that seems clunky seems like a bad thing seems like it's not the right place to shove that into bedrock we considered a bigger refactor for the area but i think that's risky given all the behaviors and devices that are tied up in it what we landed wow. on is having additional data and is first property which can help a creator know whether it's the first interaction in a series of events creators will probably still need to have some sort of internal tracker for is this the first event i'm seeing which is not awesome so <laughs> Even, what are you telling us? You're telling us that you're adding in additional data, but creators will still have to add in their own additional data to do what this is doing anyways. Then why are you doing it? Are you just justifying your jobs by changing shit? Why in the hell are you doing it if the player has to do or the creator has to do it anyways this isn't working it's clunky every time you run into a problem you pivot into another problem and pivot into another problem and pivot into another problem instead of just stopping the bleeding q if cancelled the block cannot be interacted so player can be able to place blocks onto it without sneaking. This is helpful if we want to make block to be interactable only on certain condition. For example, we can make the south face of the block to be interactable, but not the other face of the block. Because currently, when on player interact is present, the whole block becomes interactable. 6. A. The on player interact event is an after event, but if it was a before event we may be able to cancel the interaction. An interesting idea, unfortunately it is not currently on our roadmap, but... So again, another it's not on a roadmap, it's an interesting idea we haven't thought of before. It's number 
two. I don't know. Maybe we should take a poll. What are the top 50 things that you want added to Bedrock? I'm betting interacting with blocks is number two. And you can't do it, and it's not even on the roadmap. So all blocks, all custom blocks, regardless of their face, regardless of what direction they are, the entire block is always going to be interactable using JS. Wow. Wow. What a clunky ass feature that is. Is worth a look into. Summoning entities with block arrangements. 1Q. Suggest adding a feature where players can summon entities using specific block arrangements, similar to the Wither or Iron Golem. This would expand gameplay by introducing new creatures. This is probably 15 on patterns. the request list. 2A. Yeah, for this one what I'd probably recommend is something like the player place block before event, HTTP URL and do a bit of pattern matching of nearby blocks to see if it matches something and then summon an entity if there is a match. Not sure we'd necessarily have a JSON data-driven feature for that anytime soon. You block know how hard it is to set up a block scanner and how performance heavy it is because you didn't put the block logic in the block? We can't do it that way. The only option is to have JS scan all of them or have the player do a BPAC scan of them with commands where I have to literally run a command by coordinate on every block from here all the way out to 70 blocks. You know how many commands that is? How janky that is? Because you won't let the block detect if there's another block next to it and do something? The block is so stupid, we can't do seamless, we can't do doors, we can't do double stacks, because you won't let us do it. You want us to use JS way out here to manage a block right here and detect what's next to it. It's illogical as even a centralized or decentralized solution. You guys come from server side where the block should be the server and it should be detecting from out because that's the most effective way to do it. And instead you're taking something from way out here in the cloud and having it manage a block interaction? Having it check each of these things? Are you kidding? The block should do it. Just like it did in HCF. But no, that's the wrong way to do it. We, a professor once told me that events should be in JS and logic should be in JS and JSON should only be for a list of stuff. That's what he told me. And if you don't do it that way, it doesn't work. Even though Minecraft's been doing it that way for 10 years and is the number one game of all time because of it. 1Q, suggest adding a feature where players can summon entities using specific block arrangements, similar to the Wither or Iron Golem. This would ick block tags Java parody. 1Q, it would be great to get a variety of tags to make it easier to filter blocks using scripts instead of being selected individually, as well as making custom item functions easier, as custom tools, so when interacting with blocks it would be through several with some vanilla tag. 2A, I think we are going to poke this area soon trademark. Allows transformation, rotation to be set in any rotation. I, their soon is like in the next two to three years, it sounds like. They're backlogged out, what, six months before you even get to the near term. And then the mid to long term is six months to two years. So we might do the, the this has kind of been on our minds is another one of those so i think we're at four four now uh of things that they're actually thinking about and then the rest are just a pipe dream that maybe they hope they'll get to one q currently we can only rotate blocks divisible by 90 such as 0 90 180 270 and negative values 
so we can't choose to rotate. It, you might as well just call called rotated blocks that aren't at 45 degrees cursed. I think this would break Minecraft visually. What? You added a sniffer. You added a whole bunch of stuff that broke your design guidelines. But having a block that doesn't stick to 45 degrees is going to break it? Them 45 degrees, for example, to make our block road texture variation for modeled blocks. 1Q, are there any plans to allow custom blocks to have varying textures? 2A, texture variance for custom blocks using material underscore instances is on our long-term roadmap. This is probably 9 on the top 50 list, block variance. Q. As it stands now, blocks utilizing the Minecraft geometry dot full underscore block model, or equivalent, are not treated in the same way as a typical full block. And for their performance is trash. I mean, you could almost just do entities and have the same performance. Anytime I've tried to use custom geo blocks, I have a castle. I just wanted to use, use them as the walls. <clears throat> And the performance is just ridiculous. I wanted to use them for leaves, and the performance is just ridiculous. You can't fire particles from them, so they can't do anything. They can't drop when you hit them, so they can't do anything. Why, why do we even have them? Why do you give us custom blocks when they're so useless? The sake of ambient occlusion. They appear to catch shading from other blocks. Yeah, and then the lighting is, a, is just a joke. Nor the shadow and lighting on blocks is just a complete joke. Most notably his impact that was probably all done on somebody's vacation time. States with textures per face. Here is an example created with a custom log, as compared to vanilla's oak logs, HTTP URL. Having this fixed would enable creators to prop to a so this actually seems like a bug to me. Would you be willing to add that block JSON oh into this gosh. thread? What do you mean it seems like a bug to you? These are the things that we complain about and struggle with all the time. You can see it in my guides. You can see it in my videos. You can see it in the support chat. What the hell are you guys doing if you don't know about these common issues? Once again, these people are not making their own content. They're not doing this. They're going to work. They're doing whatever it takes to get their job done, and they're going home. These are not creators passionate about making content and making the creation of Minecraft Bedrock better. Hey, so this actually seems like a bug to me. Would you be willing to add that block JSON to this thread and I can take a look? But overall in terms of the mix of other solidity concepts and the full block geo, we are looking at how to split solidity up into more logical chunks of behavior that can be customized. Camera collision component. In other, in, in other words, they're looking into it and nothing's going to happen. Oh, it, it, it's on our mind. I, what? Is there a list of all the things you're looking into? Do you have a looking into meeting every week? What does that mean? You guys had a chat about it? 1. Q. Some blocks, such as glass blocks, for example, have a different rules for collision with the camera than for entities. It'd be neat to be able this to recreate is a great this question. behavior, such as oh Minecraft camera goodness. underscore collision, false. Or perhaps with the same properties as the collision underscore box or selection underscore box components. 2. They've been doing stuff with custom cameras and changing the camera around, but they hadn't stopped and looked at how the camera interacts with blocks before. Oh, interesting. Well, since you're just now looking at it, 
could you look at how cameras interact with entities too? Because it's really frustrating when the camera goes inside an entity. It looks really clunky. Have you not ever noticed that in Minecraft? Do you play Minecraft? How, how do you... How do you work in add-ons and not have run into block collision on the camera being a freaking nightmare? That's probably number four on the top 10, top 15 list. It's amazing how the community knows every one of these is on the top list and Mojang has no freaking clue. Like, they don't play the game or they don't do add-ons or I don't know. Like what they do honestly this whole thing just makes me appalled Cute. this is i think it's really strange that at the moment there I, isn't any i've way seen to presentations add. since the 80s from intel hundreds thousands of microsoft presentations i mean one on one with microsoft engineers and developers and and pms and support staff and all kinds of play, people in person and this is insane. The lack of knowledge and understanding and empathy for their customer base and for the creators and the lack of what they understand is going on is crazy. It's crazy. It's way worse than the server chat was. Custom sound types to blocks.json definitions. There are short names for vanilla blocks, referencing their set of sound events triggered by gameplay, step, break, place, etc. For example, dirt underscore with underscore roots. Sound, dirt underscore with underscore roots. 1, 2, 3, 4. It would be very, very nice to able to at least define custom names to use in these definitions, with links to custom sounds for the default block events. Similarly, it would be even nicer to have custom sound events to reference. It's so frustrating because almost all of these are literally saying, could we just have what entities have but with blocks and with items, which is all we asked for in the first place. We had 90 to 95%, maybe even 98% of the stuff we wanted. We needed a few things from shaders change. We needed a few other things tweaked with items, and they dumped it all. All we have left is entities. They they literally only needed to take and have one thing and have in it a class and say it's an item, it's a block, it's an entity. That's it. You select it when you set up the file. That determines how it's formatted, and we move on. And it'd be so easy for everybody, and you could... Make it to where the performance for entities was as good as blocks, and you could have them at resting state be static and take away the dynamic lighting and take away all that fancy stuff and make them act like a block for performance. And it could all just be smooth for creators. And instead, someone came in and said, well, my professor said that you really should do this instead, and so I'm going to do that, and we're going to just poop on all the rest of you everything else everything else all those things you guys are asking for we're just going to break those things don't worry we we have them on, on our minds you know they're on our minds don't worry we we well we don't have a lot of these on our minds we these are just interesting things oh interesting we didn't never think about cameras intersecting with the the blocks what it's a block game the player has a camera, and you didn't think about them interacting? Microsoft. If anybody at Microsoft is watching this, I'm sorry. Why are these people still do it, running the show? What? It, are these the people that came from 343 that were running Halo into the ground? Because it sure feels like it. Here and in other places such as the Minecraft record sound underscore event property, and perhaps adding new similar properties included on. 1. Minecraft shooter. 2. A sound event for completing the use, 
built in, and perhaps a means to play attached sound events from custom block slash item components in the script API. 2. Because you can't do that now? And perhaps a means to play attached sounds and events for custom blocks, so... It, never mind. Hey, yeah, I believe this all comes back to the ability to add custom sound events versus override vanilla ones, yeah. We're tracking this one. I'll take this as an additional plus one. It's not on the short-term roadmap though. Multi-collision blocks. One. Q. Will Sound be problems are probably 19th on the top 20. Way in the future to have a custom hitbox, or a better way of making them. Like how stairs have a different collision box I than normal blocks. I should not have watched this. Two. I should have just... A. We know the interest in being able to do stairs that require more than I knew it was going to be bad. I didn't, and I didn't know it was going to be this bad. component is capable of, so we're looking at some options that will allow us to bring that functionality to you. It's on our long-term roadmap. Disabling Silk Touch. 1. So we've gone through another 5 to 10 questions, and we're still at 4 things that they're working on, um, and all the rest are 6 months to many, many years, long, long ways out, beyond, plus the backlog anyway, so... Q, we can already do this with scripts, but it doesn't feel vanilla. It would be nice if we had a way to disable a block dropping on Silk Touch, or changing the loot for silk touch. So we can already do it with scripting, but it doesn't feel what well, it doesn't feel vanilla, so it feels clunky. Feels like it doesn't belong in Minecraft. Feels like it doesn't belong in vanilla. Yeah, I know. Two. A. On a custom block, this can be done in the loot table by adding a match underscore tool condition that includes the silk touch enchantment. HTTP URL On our short-term roadmap is a way to change a vanilla blocks loot table on destroy So you can't do That now That's I mean, I don't know where loot tables probably fall six on the top 15 or 20 So there you go. This has been your um disheartening let's talk in their words i have a lack of heart and hope and faith in their ability to one just do what they say um if you look at all of their answers they're all vague none of them commit to anything they're all just politic talk, corporate bullshit. Um, you know, it it's just ridiculous. I would rate this a a one. They showed up. That's it. I, this is just depressing.